लोकसभा इलेक्शन आर वेरी क्लोज नाउ हाउ इज द इंडिया ब्लॉक शेपिंग अप हाउ इज इट प्लेस इन टेकिंग ऑन द बीजेपी एंड यू नो द रिसेंट इवेंट्स दैट हैव हैपन डू यू सी एनी सेट बैक टू द अलायंस और यू थिंक इट्स गोइंग गुड आई डो नॉट थिंक देर इज सेट बैक बट इट इज ट्रू देर आर डिफिकल्टीज प्रॉब्लम्स बिकॉज वी आर अ पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेसी एंड पोलिटिकल पार्टीज wish to participate in electoral battle having reasonable number of uh, seats in order to get reasonable presence in parliament so seat sharing is a problem on which there can be difficulties and it should not be uh, taken as a setback because there are problems there are difficulties but it should not be taken as setback what i am trying to say india block as emerged as an alternative and now people look forward uh, to india block's performance so that india block can be a viable alternative how to emerge as a viable alternative for which there should be reasonable seat sharing uh, arrangement because uh, the constituents of india block must be mutual uh, they must have mutual trust and they must be mutually accommodative to each other uh, particularly in seat sharing let us see but at the same time we've seen some party also exit the india block like the jdu left the rld went or the tmc they said that seat sharing will not happen in west bengal though they said that later on they may consider after the polls so how do you see these exits do you think it makes the alliance weaker jd exit of jdu is uh, really a betrayal because after karnataka assembly elections mr nitish kumar took the initiative to meet the leaders of uh, various secular democratic parties he hosted that first meeting in patna there the leaders all came together and uh, expressed their uh, declared their common resolve that in order to save india we will have to fight together and defeat bjp desh bachao bjp atav that was uh, the declaration made by all leaders of the these parties it was in patna but uh, jdu left mr nitish kumar left uh, it should be called as a betrayal uh, because uh, mr nitish kumar uh, nobody expected he would uh, uh, do such a thing and he did it he went back to bjp and uh, but in bihar i must say people will uh, teach him a lesson and uh, people of bihar understand the betrayal of uh, mr nitish kumar that's what i could see there was a huge rally and uh, it was really a huge rally so what uh, was the mood of the people that you saw at the, the rally mood of the people in bihar one against mr nitish kumar against the bjp coalition there the mood of the people of bihar is to support and stand by mr tejasvi and uh, i find mr tejasvi is taken as a leader of the future and uh, he enjoys the support and uh, the sympathies of the people of uh, bihar that's what i could see so the opposition block had this basic idea of having maximum possible seat sharing so how far do you think you've succeeded in that and uh, you know uh, from each constituency to have one opposition candidate to give a tough fight to bjp but do you think that that goal has been achieved the thing is uh, in country like ours 
in a multi party electoral battle that we have it is not easy to have one to one contest everywhere but there are possibilities there are possibilities for instance tamil nadu there is a coalition it is dmk led coalition mr stalin demonstrated his uh, maturity political understanding to take the secular democratic parties into fold and share the seats accordingly and uh, it is going well in the same way there are other states also where such an exercise can be made can be successful but there are difficulties we are trying to sort out the difficulties and we are uh, trying to uh, bring everybody together and uh, uh, put all our efforts together in order to ensure the defeat of bjp as we said in tamil nadu it becomes one to one contest but it can be uh, triangular contest or multi corner contest also because in uh, tamil nadu also dmk led coalition is one the other thing is there is a dmk and uh, bjp and how the battle is going to be we will have to see so uh, one to one means uh, uh, if it is bipolar contest but there are multi corner contests uh, so one has to take everything into consideration the whole idea is the secular democratic parties must come together and share the seats available and put up a strong collective fight in order to ensure the defeat of bjp the primary objective must be to remove bjp from seat of power so when it comes to kerala so left parties have already announced that mrs ani raja is going to contest from wayanad at the same time congress also announced that rahul gandhi will be contesting from there and you have said that he should have contested from a seat where they could they can directly challenge bjp that is what people would have preferred so how do you still see this do you think why is congress reluctant in some you know no firstly we should understand kerala is one state there the primary electoral battle is between ldf and udf and there are only 20 seats within ldf our party cpi gets four seats tiruvananthapuram thrissur mavelikara and vayanad and our party in kerala the state unit has unanimously proposed the candidates for four seats and the national leadership of the party has approved it now it is for congress party to decide what it wants to do because uh, it is the prerogative of any political party to uh, choose the candidate or to choose the constituency to fight whatever way they that has to wants to fight so it is their prerogative uh, let them decide but what is the public opinion that's what has been expressed the public opinion is uh it mr rahul gandhi office stature should have contested against the bjp because we are fighting bjp ideologically politically at national level in the states so he as a leader of uh, this fight he should have contested bjp directly that is one opinion uh, th- that is for congress party that is for congress party by fielding him in kerala what message congress party wants to send out it is for congress party to explain who have nothing 
and uh, it is not a personal fight. So in Kerala, it's a battle between the LDF and UDF, and the LDF has announced it, its candidates. UDF, when it announced its candidates, it announced Mr. Rahul Gandhi also as one of the candidates. He is a, of a leader of a national uh, stature. And uh, if he wanted to contest any seat from southern part of India, he could have chosen a seat in Karnataka or in Telangana, wherever to fight BJP directly. This is the public opinion. It is not my party's <laughs> opinion or we are not pleading uh, for that. It is the public opinion. It is for Congress uh, party to think over. Do you think you should have fought from Amiti? No, that is for Congress party to think over uh, because uh, they he used to contest from Amiti. And now, I don't know whether now he will contest from Amethi or not. It is for Congress party. It is the prerogative of any political party. Congress party cannot dictate uh, uh, whom, uh, who should be our party's candidate, which constituency we should uh, fight. In the same way, we are not asking Congress party. Whatever they want to do, let them do. But the fight is against BJP. How that message can be conveyed effectively to the people. We are all together in the fight against the right-wing communal fascist forces. How that message can be conveyed, that's what we should think over. So do you think LDF will increase its tally in Kerala? That is what we are hoping. And there is a, a change of uh, mood and uh, people also have gone through certain experiences because of the disastrous policies pursued by the union government. Now Kerala is in financial crisis. Even Supreme Court has to intervene. And the chief minister of Kerala came to Delhi in order to protest against the discriminatory attitude of the union government. The, what the union government is doing is undermining the federal system of governments and uh, states do not have adequate financial powers, political powers and uh, state governments are uh, undermined. Uh, so uh, people have understood this, people of Kerala have understood this. Not only this, the governor, the way governor uh, conducts uh, himself in state of Kerala. Uh, terrible. Uh, 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 one cannot uh, uh, imagine a constitutional uh, head whether uh, he can or she can behave like this. After all, who, who is governor? A governor is uh, uh, appointed by the president, but uh, there is an elected government. The real governor is the elected chief minister. The real governor is the elected state government. Undermining the chief minister, undermining the authority of the elected government. How uh, the, the so-called governor can act? Uh, that is the question. And uh, people are raising that question. It is happening in Kerala. It is happening in Tamil Nadu also, in some other states also. So federalism is under attack under the BJP regime. And uh, people of Kerala have realized this also. So there is a uh, change of mood of the people. Uh, let us see how, uh, because no party should take people for granted. And uh, people are the makers of history. Uh, they change the history. And people should not be taken for granted. We convince the people and we are able to reach out the people and people uh, listen to us, people agree to our points, to our positions. That's what I can say. 
So then Jharkhand also CPI has announced that you will go solo in the Lok Sabha elections and uh, eight seats have been identified. Uh, sir, uh, what forced you to go away from the India bloc no, in Jharkhand? we have not gone. We have not gone. We have identified seven, eight seats there. And we have a widespread uh, presence in uh, Bihar, in Jharkhand. And uh, as a political party, we have uh, the right uh, to uh, propose the constituencies where our party can fight. That's what uh, our party has done, identified these seats. At the same time, these seats are subject to negotiation. Okay. And uh, if Congress party, JMM and other parties agree uh, for a reasonable seat sharing arrangement, well and good. This is what we have been saying. It is not that we have closed our doors and we are uh, talking to Congress party, even JMM and uh, at uh, uh, all levels. And we are also trying to uh, tell the Congress party and other parties to understand uh, CPI is a uh, force to be reckoned with in the state of Jharkhand and in the electoral battle, CPI cannot be uh, uh, sidelined. So our party has reason to identify seats and we have announced and negotiations continue. If negotiations are successful, then it is okay. If negotiations do not lead to any uh, uh, acceptable uh, result, then what to do? How long do you think you will wait in Jharkhand? Uh, let us see. The uh, schedule for elections will be announced very soon. Yeah, maybe the election commissioners, uh, one vacancy, one resignation. If uh, election commissioners are appointed, maybe we expect uh, the announcement of uh, the schedule for elections. By the time things should be uh, settled. Otherwise, let us see what uh, our party can do, other parties can do. So, what about Bihar? How many seats are you looking forward to in Bihar? In Bihar, we have identified three seats and we conveyed it to RJD, Mr. Tejeshwi. Uh, we have conveyed it uh, to Congress party also. How uh, these uh, negotiations are go going to be? We will have to... So is Begusarai one of those seats? No, Begusarai, in fact, Banka, Begusarai and Madhubani. These are the three seats our party has identified. We conveyed this to Mr. Lalu Prasad Yadav and Mr. Tejeshwi. Okay. And by when do you think the Bihar uh, talks will be settled, seat sharing talks? No, we want uh, the seat sharing talks... Uh, to be over as early as possible. Yesterday there was a, a nomination for MLC, people were busy with that. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, today, tomorrow, in the coming in a few days, things uh, can be settled. So CPI has two MPs from Tamil Nadu. Now BJP is also looking at increasing its tally in some way in the southern states and Kerala and Tamil Nadu. They are they have been working on. Uh, what kind of uh, do you think there can be some change for BJP as far as it is like the southern states are concerned? No, I do not think uh, BJP can make any headway in Tamil Nadu or Kerala uh, because. Uh, uh, BJP tries hard, that one can say. BJP is spending a huge money and uh, uh, BJP is using all its resources, including the social media and uh, mainstream media uh, to project its image. And uh, Prime Minister and other BJP leaders frequently visit uh, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, for that matter South Indian states. But it is difficult for BJP because the ideology of BJP will not be accepted by the people of Tamil Nadu and for that matter by, by the people of other states. 
but bjp tries our prime minister uh, yeah, uh, whether uh, i don't know whether it is uh, uh, pilgrimage religious pilgrimage or political campaign all put together prime minister whenever there is an opportunity jumps uh, to travel to tamil nadu and other things despite all these things it is not possible for bjp to have a foothold in tamil nadu sir uh, recently we saw the consecration ceremony of ram temple the timing of which was questioned by almost all opposition parties uh, so do you think it is going to have any impact in the lok sabha elections or how do you see the whole scenario i do not think that is going to have uh, uh, any impact but bjp wants it, uh, it should be used for its electoral advantage but people know yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the bjp is understanding of ram is different from uh, the people's understanding of ram uh, yeah, that, that is what uh, parliament also there was a debate uh, uh, gandhi's ram and uh, uh, bjp's ram and uh, people are people they are very realistic and uh, given to them people live in harmony hindus muslim sikhs or for that matter any other christians all live together all live together uh, and there is no uh, enmity or disharmony among the people for instance uh, you are talking about tamil nadu tamil nadu uh, there is uh, uh, nagur darga you must have heard that uh, there is a vadarnyam uh, 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 temple uh, the church uh, and uh, there is uh, tyagaraja temple all hindu temple christian church and uh, 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 muslim darga all exist coexist and uh, no quarrel they all live uh, in harmony but why bjp rss combined wants to divide people in the name of religion and they the bjp rss combined tries to use ram also to divide the people for electoral gains for political gains it is uh, really unacceptable uh, we have a constitution and the constitution makes it very clear indian nation should continue to be secular democratic republic indian state should be a secular democratic state not a theocratic state dr ambedkar never accepted the theocracy or theocratic uh, character of indian nation or theocratic character of indian state dr ambedkar emphatically rejected but now the bjp rss combined is trying to impose the theocratic character of indian nation or indian state that is why the bjp elected members of parliament and uh, uh, other leaders keep talking against constitution this constitution should be thrown out replaced replaced by what what is the other thing is it manusrumiti that's what people are questioning so ram this uh, bjp rss combine may try to use for political purpose but people's understanding is different they cannot uh, hoodwink people by showing ram or ram temple ayodhya even ayodhya in tamil nadu there is a belief yeah yeah wherever ram is there that is ayodhya it is not that ram lives in ayodhya wherever ram is there that is ayodhya and here what bjp rss combine is talking about yeah that's all. what is ram rajya in uh, tamil nadu uh, there are debates what does it mean ram rajya and uh, our kambaramayan it says yeah, ram rajya means where nobody is there to get something from somebody 
that is what uh, there should not be people who throw something who uh, receive something and all should be equal all should be equal that is the uh, definition of ram rajya as per kambara mind all should be equal and no discrimination no inequality no injustice whether bjp rss combine agrees to this that's what people are asking so the other uh, slogan that the bjp has been using is modi ki guarantee which is a play up on the social schemes so how do you see that because the uh, you know schemes like manrega there a lot of questions have been raised now what is uh, uh, modi ka guarantee or modi sarkar ka guarantee what is that guarantee when mr modi became prime minister what he said he will, his government would create generate 2 crore jobs per year now 10 years 10 into 2 20 crore jobs should have been created where are those jobs is, is it not modi's guarantee then you say it is modi's jumla it is modi uh, told lie to the people they should admit it was a lie uh, told by the prime minister let them say and uh, mr modi said black money will be unearthed every citizen will get 15 lakh rupees now where is that 15 lakh rupees that also modi's guarantee or they'll let them say it was not modi's guarantee it was modi's lie modi's jumla let them say we have no problem so we can question modi yeah, modi said uh, uh, sabka sath sabka vikas he goes on repeats now whether modi government is uh, kisan ka sath people are asking because uh, people are uh, the, uh, farmers are fighting what they ask minimum support price that's all they ask the for their produce mr modi government gave uh, bharat ratna award to mr saminathan it was mr saminathan commission which proposed minimum support price for the produce of farmers what is modi's guarantee this what people are asking modi spoke about cooperative federalism where is cooperation where is federalism more the cooperative federalism which modi spoke about was uh, modi's uh, lie modi's jumla or just deceit of the people so there are many questions there are many questions about modi's guarantee and what is modi's guarantee uh, today and uh, they claim uh, uh, yeah, india's uh, gdp has gone up 7.6% or 8% but who gains and uh, 1% of the richest people uh, wants the vast uh, wealth created by the people they let them go by data that is why this modi's guarantee as nothing but deceit of the people at the time of elections and it has no conviction or commitment sir um, uh, recently uh, an a judgment came on electoral bonds and now supreme court has also asked sbi uh, to like you know give the data to eci which has been given now so how do you see the whole thing and uh, do you think once the data is revealed uh, there will be things that will come out and open it should come out uh, openly to the public domain because when the electoral bonds this issue was debated in parliament our party communist party of india opposed i opposed i was there in rajya sabha mr arun jetli was the finance minister and uh, the whole scheme was brought as part of money bill that's how it was brought to uh, rajya sabha now why they are, they were seeking time now how uh, the state bank could uh, submit the details initially why they asked for more time 
because on one side ms modi talks about digital india uh, india development vikshit india or what is that uh, hindi word and uh, digital india and it should take only one hour or one and a half hours to compile all the data everything is available and uh, some 29 uh, bank branches have been authorized to issue bonds why they sought for more time and now they have submitted let us see whether uh, any corporate house name will be there or what are the shell companies uh, whose names will be there we do not know we have not seen the data but uh, it is said state bank of india submitted the data we will have to wait and see sir also on the eve of elections a lot of questions are being raised over evms and over the paper trail demanding 100% paper trail counting so what is your view on this subject the credibility of evms has become questionable people doubt and uh, there are uh, uh, social media debates uh, who votes doesn't matter who counts matters <laughs> that uh, shows how people uh, look at uh, evms the point is uh, now vvpat is there and uh, in fact uh, i was also one of the signatories of uh, petitioners uh, going to supreme court asking that uh, vv pat uh, the should be counted for one assembly segment in a parliamentary constituency but supreme court didn't agree supreme court said uh, some four five polling stations it can be counted now people are asking you allow that uh, proper vv pat you put in a separate box you count tally let us see so the question is evms the credibility of evms has become questionable how to restore the credibility that election commission should think over election commission should think over even uh, Uh, people uh, say uh, those who are part of uh, the manufacture of evms uh, they belong to certain political uh, parties also so the restoration of credibility of evms evms is a must election commission being a constitutional body it should ensure free and fair elections it should ensure level playing field among all political parties election commission should function as an independent neutral constitutional body that is what we all hope what is the main factor that will be the play the deciding role in in this election and what is the opposition's role how do you see it 2024 elections are very very critical for the country and its future for the past 10 years what we witness is disastrous rule mr modi claimed maximum governance minimum government but the governance has become minimum even minus government has become maximum and democracy is in peril parliament is becoming redundant unprecedented more than 140 mps were suspended dr ambedkar said parliament is the supreme institution of our democracy and parliament represents the sovereign will of the people in fact parliament belongs to the opposition because opposition has to question the government and its policies and the opposition should uh, hold executive responsible accountable for all what is happening in the country now mps have been suspended parliament uh, 
as uh, become redundant if parliament becomes redundant democracy dies that's what we are witnessing in india today and uh, the attack on uh, secular democracy the attack on federalism finally one should uh, conclude that constitution is under subversion the bjp rss combined is subverting the constitution the very constitution and uh, they are uh, trying to uh, redefine indian nation rewrite indian history and uh, in such a situation how to save india how to save the constitution how to save the democracy how to save the secular democratic fabric of our society the federal system of governance unless we remove the present regime from power unless we defeat bjp so according to our party the primary objective before these people in the elections the primary objective is to defeat bjp and to save india democracy constitution this is how we look at this uh, election so these elections are very very critical for the country and its future and we hope people will uh, vote in order to save the country constitution democracy and people will remove bjp from power that is what our party thinks